In this video, we're going to talk about how you can use locks on your Palo Alto in order to control when changes are occurring in your environment. Now, commit locks and other types of locks on the Palo Alto would be helpful if multiple users are working on the system at the same time. Uh, basically, what you want to do is you want to control when changes are occurring and make sure that one user doesn't commit things in the middle of somebody else working on it. So let's check out to see what that hap how that happens. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go in here and I'm going to create a second admin user. I've already got one admin user. Let's just go ahead and create admin two. Yeah, super user role, great. Uh, basically now I have two users. Let me go ahead and commit that. And while that's committing, let me open up a uh, different web browser and try to go ahead and connect into that same system. And I'll log in as admin two here. Basically what I'm doing is I'm setting up so I have two different web browsers, uh, both running as two different users. Uh, that means I can make a change as one and then see how that affects the other. All right. So in order to do a lock, what you do is you come up here on the upper right hand corner and you click this little lock icon. Uh, lock icon allows you to specify that you don't want anybody else to make any changes to the system. So here I am, I'm currently logged in as just the plain admin and I want to take a lock. Maybe I'm gonna be working on firewall, on some of the firewall rules and so I want to control who can make changes to the system at one time. There we go. Asks me what type of lock do I want to make? Do I want to do a commit lock or a config lock? Config lock means nobody can make any changes to the configuration. Commit lock means nobody can make any commits. I'm gonna go with the commit lock just because maybe other people need to make configuration changes, but I don't want them to go into effect just yet. And I'll type in a comment, changing the policies, firewall policies. And say okay, and close. I can now see that the lock icon has a one on it. So let me go ahead and move this browser out of the way and come back to the other browser, which we just logged in as admin two. We can actually see the name down here at the bottom, admin two. Over here, let's go ahead and refresh this page. Let's refresh the whole thing, excuse me. All right, and as this is opening up uh, very slowly in the background, we can see that the lock icon has a one next to it, uh, showing that, yes, there is actually a commit lock going on here. Um, so let's see what happens when we do that. Uh, if I come in here to say the objects, we'll just create an object, we'll create an address, sure. Test address uh, one. One, 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 sure. Just using a sample address in order to show what will happen. Uh, and now that I've gone ahead, I've made that change, uh, this user will want to commit it. And so I click commit and commit, and it should prompt me and say, nope, nope, so somebody else is holding a lock on this device. And I say, okay. And then I come up and I click on the lock icon to be able to see what the lock is and I can see Oh, well this was committed, or this lock was created by the admin user. Uh, it's a commit type lock, 
Here is his comment and when it was created. This is very helpful for me to be able to see who else is working on the system, what they might be doing, and then more specifically, did they forget? Uh, maybe they created the lock and then they never removed it when they were done. Uh, so I can actually come in here with my cursor and I can say remove the lock. So if somebody had already gone home for the day, maybe they committed this lock a week ago and you're pretty sure that the system no longer needs whatever they were working on, you can go ahead and remove the lock. Otherwise, if I close this and come back to my original admin user, I can go back, click on his lock and then say, yep, yeah, I'm done. Let's go ahead and remove that and close. And now the changes that the other user has created will continue through.